uh, we should begin and uh, go through the preamble material here. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we want to convene the virtual meeting. Welcome to the April 22nd meeting of the River Advisory Committee. Rod has just joined us. Um, and happy Earth Day. This is Earth Day. How about that? Okay, as chair of the River Advisory Committee, I have to read this preamble. I find that due to the state of emergency declared by the governor as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic and in accordance with the governor's emergency order number 12, this public body is authorized to meet electronically. Public notice of this meeting was posted on the town website and on the bulletin board of the town offices at 10 Front Street. As provided in that public notice, the public may access the meeting online and via phone. Please note that all votes taken during this meeting shall be done by roll call vote. Let's start the meeting by taking a roll call attendance. When each member states their presence, please also state whether there is anyone in the room with you during this meeting and who that person is, son, daughter, spouse, etc., which is required under the right to know law. So let me begin the roll call. I am Dick Huber, the uh, chairman of the River Advisory Committee, and uh, my spouse, Carol, is in the same apartment, and I might call her to help me with her computer if I have trouble, but other than that, I don't think she'll attend the meeting. Uh, Nico? Nico has to get off mute so he can tell me he's here. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Nico Papakostandis. I am uh, the select board rep to the committee, and I'm here alone in the room. Okay, Ginny. I am here alone. Lionel. I'm here alone. Rod. I'm here alone. Um, as I said, Terry Harmon told me she couldn't come. Dan Jones. Dan Jones, I'm here alone. Uh, Carl Wickstrom said that he couldn't come. Uh, Warren Biggins. Here and alone in the room. Don Clement. Uh, he's on mute. I see him, but he's on mute. I'm sorry, uh, Don Clement, member of the public, and I'm here alone in the room. Okay. For now. And Paul Vlasic is here. Yeah, Paul Vlasic, town engineer, alone in my office. Thank you. Okay, now I think I've the only people I haven't asked is uh, Jake. Yep, I'm uh, here and I'm alone in my office. And he represents VHB and Jill. Hi, yes, I'm also with VHB and I am currently alone in the room. Okay, so I've done that. Uh, what I think we were expecting some people from Brentwood, so we may uh, find people still joining us at some point soon. It looks like there's two folks in the attendees room. Yeah, I was just going to say, Mr. Chair, there are two people in the and he's one with their hand up. Uh, there's a Wayne Robinson with their hand up to speak. Uh, let's see. I guess my I participant list isn't going far enough down to find them. Um, Dick, at the top of the participant list, you'll see panelists, and then you have to click attendees to see the list of attendees. Kind of tab between the two. Oh, there it is, attendees. Okay, let me try that. Okay, so Robert Steffens is with us, and Wayne Robertson is with us. Mr. Chair, just for a tip, if somebody in the attendee puts their hand up, there'll be a hand next to the board attendee, so that will alert you that somebody wishes to speak. Okay, thank you. I'm writing these names down, so I'll have a list, but okay. Um, okay, uh, what I would like to recommend is that we put off talking about the three sets of draft minutes we have to approve, and uh, we proceed with Paul's presentation uh, directly, and I believe that there are VHB people here who will want to be part of that. Is that correct? Uh, yes, thank you, uh, Mr. Huber. Uh, Last month, 
I showed a couple diagrams of some analysis that got started with the uh, hydrology and hydraulics of the uh, pickpocket dam. Uh, the work continued after uh, last month. And uh, Jake and Jill are here to go through a short presentation of some of the findings uh, to date. And with that, if you don't mind, I'd like to turn it over to uh, Jake San Antonio. And um, uh, he, will he has a short presentation. He'd probably like to share his screen too, if that's all right, Dick. Sure. Yes, please. Okay. Um, let me know if uh, you can now see my screen. I can. I can. Yep. Good. Okay. Um, well, let me get started. I'm, uh, as Paul said, I am Jake San Antonio. I'm a water resource engineer with VPHP, and I'm here today to talk about the pickpocket dam and the results of our preliminary spillway alternatives analysis. I'll start off with a little bit uh, about. Uh, you know, pickpocket dam and the project background. As I'm sure you're aware, there is a letter of deficiency from New Hampshire DES on the pickpocket dam. Pickpocket is considered a high hazard dam, and therefore the dam is required to have discharge capacity sufficient to pass two and a half times the 100 year flood with one foot of freeboard without any manual operations. As I believe Paul presented at the last River Study Committee meeting, BHB first completed a hydrologic study to determine the design discharge. This was calculated to be just over 10,000 cubic feet per second. I do want to note that this is based on the current standards and does not include an evaluation for climate change and what discharges may be in the future. We then use this discharge to complete a preliminary evaluation for several potential design modifications to the dam. In order to do this evaluation, we had to update uh, portions of the existing HECRAS model that we had previously used to extend the, the cross sections that represent the river to extend up to higher elevations given the magnitude of uh, the design support. So here are the alternatives that we evaluated. You know, we first evaluated existing conditions of so the dam with uh, no changes. We then evaluated whether the crossroad bridge has an impact on flood elevations at the dam and its potential capacity. We evaluated raising the abutments within their current extents. And then we also evaluated creating a second tier abutment, essentially creating uh, a new abutments um, on the landward side on each side of the dam. This would essentially create um, a two-tiered spillway where the existing spillway would, would stay the same and then the, what is now the current abutments would become a second tier spillway and then we'd be adding additional abutments. And then for each alternative we also evaluated re removing an island that is formed along the crest on river right. I'm gonna go into each of these in more detail now. So here's existing conditions. And let me tell you a little bit about the dam. Um, the existing dam is about 15 feet high. Uh, it's about 230 feet in total length with the main spillway being approximately 130 feet. Conveyance over about 45 feet of the spillway is impacted by an island that is formed on the upstream side of the dam on river right and shown on, this, on the photo. Um, based on current conditions, the 100-year flood would just about overtop the existing abutments. Um, you know, the 100-year flood we determined would be about 66.14 feet, um, and the existing spillway crests or existing top of abutments are at 66, so just over overtopping the existing abutments. Um, and then based on our analysis, the two and a half times the 100 year event or the design storm would be about 2.2 feet over the current abutments. So I mentioned previously, we evaluated uh, potential impacts that Crossroad has on these flood elevations. And what I'm showing here is a, is a profile view of the river with the black lines along the bottom 
representing the river bottom, and then the blue lines that travel from left to right are the 100-year water surface elevation and the two and a half times the 100-year water surface elevation. When we first did this preliminary analysis, we saw that there's a significant backwater behind crossroads that starts to impact the crest elevation of Pickpocket Dam. So we thought that the crossroad bridge may start to impact flood elevations of the, on the Pickpocket. So what we did was evaluated you know, essentially raising the superstructure of the bridge. And then we saw that that actually had minimal impact on flood elevations. So we ended up just deleting the, the bridge completely from the model to see what impacts that may have on the water surface elevations. We really saw that removing the bridge completely had a negligible impact on water elevations at the dam's crest. So we dug into that a little bit further and found that the river naturally constricts right where the crossroad bridge is and there's significant landforms on both sides of the river that are causing that restriction and it's not actually the crossroad bridge so to start to be able to lower those flood elevations would require a much larger earthwork project to change the the overbank portions of the river um, to, to start to impact the pickpocket dam so it wasn't intuitive, but once we dug into it, it made sense that the crossroad bridge itself actually had negligible impacts on the dam. So next we, we evaluated what we're terming alternative one. And this was to increase the abutments on each side of the dam. As I mentioned previously, they're at elevation 66. And we iteratively evaluated raising those abutments to pass the design storm and provide one foot of freeboard. What we found was that you had to raise the abutments just under five feet to pass that design storm with one foot of freeboard. What we found with, with this alternative is that we, the, this resulted in a slight increase in the 100 year flood elevation. And that this is the regulatory flood that's on the FEMA flood maps, um, which wouldn't be acceptable. So we also looked at the same alternative, but removing that island that is formed on river right. And with removing the island and raising the abutments, that what we found is you'd only need to raise the abutment elevations about four and a half feet or just under four and a half feet. And that with removing that island, you'd also, you'd reduce the 100 year flood elevation. So then we looked at a second alternative, and this is the alternative where we'd be creating a second tier abutment behind the existing abutments. And similarly to alternative one, we found that you know, this alternative alone create, creates an increase in the 100 year flood elevation. So that wouldn't be acceptable. So we looked at the alternative with also removing the, the island that is formed. And with removing the island, we found that this second tier abutment would need to be 3.2 feet above the existing crest elevation or existing abutment elevations. And then the third alternative that we evaluated was dam removal. And for this option, we removed from the model the pickpocket dam, the, the um, fish ladder, and the fish training weir um, below the dam. And for this alternative, we found that the 100-year flood elevation decreases by 5.4 feet at the dam location, tapering to no decrease by the Hague Ave Bridge in Brentwood. Here's a plan view um, showing the topography in the area around the pickpocket dam. The thick black line in the center of the graphic represents the 130 foot dam crest. The, the thick gray lines on each side of that represent the existing abutments. And then the thick red lines represent the approximate extents that the 
dam would need to be extended to be able to contain um, the design storm event. Those tiebacks, you know, range from about 140 feet to 175 feet, depending on the alternatives. What we did at this time, what we did look at is where those tieback locations would be in re relative to the town's property. And on the river left, what we are seeing is that the tieback locations would be completely within um, the town's property. On river right, it's looking like the tiebacks would extend likely off of town property and potentially impact um, a couple of the abutters properties. But additional survey and evaluation will be required to understand those the full extents or impacts. And with that, that is um, all I have for presentation and I'll open it up to discussion and questions. I am looking at both attendees and panelists and not seeing hands raised, but... Uh, uh, Mr. Stevens has... Oh, wait a minute. Right. Robert Steffens has his hand raised. Can we call on Robert Steffens? Yep. Thanks. So, Mr. Stevens, you can uh, unmute yourself now and uh, introduce yourself. Uh, thank you. Um, it's, um, it's Robert Stevens. Uh, thank Stevens. you. And... Um, I, uh, I'm the chair of the Conservation Commission in Brentwood. Um, I'm just curious, I wanted to clarify, did you, did you say 10,000 CFS for the 100-year flood or two and a half times the 100-year flood? Two and a half times the 100-year flood. Yeah, okay. And has there been any, um, is there a report issued at this time? There has not been a report issued at this time. Yet. So what would the next steps be? In other well, words... In other words, this is if we if um, if this goes depending on which direction this goes, it might have impacts to others. For instance, up upstream folks with wells and stuff. Has that been uh, looked into yet? And if not, when would that occur? No, at this time, um, all that has been authorized is this preliminary look at the hydraulics requirements to pass the design flood, and you know we'd be working with the town. Um, to determine timing and next steps, including additional survey, geotech, structural evaluation, uh, you know, a, a more robust for feasibility analysis. I believe Paul is, has his hand up. Yeah, and Don uh, Clement. thank you. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Um, this, uh, this was the first uh, um, other than last month with the preliminary results of existing conditions that anyone has heard about any of the analysis that has uh, taken place uh, so far. And, and this is mostly for uh, the uh, Brentwood visitors, so I can set the stage for why we're at where we're at. Uh, We had in our uh, capital improvement program a substantial dollar figure to uh, uh, do a um, alternative analysis for what we can do with uh, Pickpocket Dam. Uh, that did not make it uh, to the town warrant and therefore we were left with whatever we had for the previous year. And to show some movement or to get some movement with the funds that we did have available, uh, we allowed or we had a contract with uh, VHB to use existing information and uh, try out the, and, and understand what that uh, design storm of two and a half times the hundred year storm event uh, would be and run that over the existing dam to see the results. And with that, there was these uh, other uh, scenarios or alternatives uh, that they, he talked about uh, uh, today. Now, 
typically we would have done additional surveys. We would have probably looked at the uh, structural stability of the dam, uh, et cetera, et cetera, leading up before we did this analysis. However, to at least get a flavor of um, some of the dynamics of what's happening with the, uh, the flows in the river at Big Pocket, we allowed this part of the contract uh, to move forward. We're almost to the end of this portion of the contract. And we have one other task to do uh, after this, and that's still to have a discussion with the uh, Dam Bureau uh, to see if we can get the classification of the uh, dam lowered. If we, if we could, what would that mean and what would we have to do to, to make that happen? That discussion, what I thought was going to happen this past month, did not happen. And it's still uh, one thing that we have to do for this portion of the contract. So where do we go from here? That's an, that's an awesome question. And, and uh, that's exactly the discussion that I wanted to have or, or, or hear from you folks. This and you're digesting this for for the first time. Uh, this shows how uh, additional abutment work and tie back on the sides could uh, uh, possibly solve some of the um, uh, discharge capacities that were required to have because of the uh, high hazard dam. Uh, we also had the idea of dam removal and what that meant, at least at the dam uh, portion. And I think back when, uh, uh, when we uh, did the um, uh, great dam removal, we also had looked at maybe a partial removal and, and also a, uh, um, oh, that, what was the word? The, um, Inflatable crest. Yeah, inflatable crest, which I, I, I don't think that was going to be allowed by New Hampshire DES to begin with. Uh, but uh, it was going to be, uh, is there a way that we could anchor the dam so that even with overtopping and the abutments and the land on the side, that uh, everything would be uh, still workable and stuff. So, so those are other options we could take a look at. But I wanted to hear from uh, the group uh, to see what you were thinking about uh, any of this stuff that we've learned so far, and, and that'll help us decide uh, where we want to move uh, on the uh, next round of analysis. And certainly we, we've got to talk to the state about the, uh, the classifications and if there's any other types of improvements we can do to uh, uh, lower that classification. And so with that, uh, I'll be quiet again. Uh, Don Clement has his hand raised. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, this is a question from Mr. San Antonio. Uh, in the presentation, you mentioned this thing called a tieback, which would run on either side of the dam, 150 to 175 feet. Could you explain what is this tieback? Is this the length of the new abutment in proposal one and two? Yes, it would be. It would be the the extent of the new abutments, whether it's you know fully concrete or whether it's an earthen portion. And that, that's to be determined in the future. But to be able to tie back to the elevations that we need to get to, that's how far far the the dam would need to be. So okay, so the extension uh, that was my second question. What would the extension be constructed? We don't know yet. It could be full concrete, or it could be earth, or it could be a combination. You got it but it would be a length in both directions of approximately 150 to 175 feet of construction or... You, you, that's exactly right, Doug. Okay. Thank you. And in, in all three scenarios, I believe we're talking about the removal of the island that's been built up above the dam. Yeah, what we found is without removal of the um, island or lengthening the actual crest, um, you would have an impact to the 100-year flood and uh, would have some regulatory implications. Okay, thank you. Appreciate the, the answers. I understand a little better now. Uh, Dan Jones has his hand up. Yes, thank you. I have a couple of questions from Mr. San Antonio. 
in the first two possibilities, you included the effect of the crossroad bridge. In the dam removal, the crossroad bridge was not mentioned. Is there no effect on it then? There would be no effect on the uh, no at the on the crossroad. Uh, what we actually found was the crossroad bridge had had no effect on um, any of the alternatives evaluated. Okay. Another question I have, and something that's bothered me all along, is where some of these numbers come from. Uh, we're talking this two point five times a hundred year flood. Where did that come from? Has it been challenged? By, has it been applied to any other? facility and has it been challenged so the two and a half times the 100 year flood is the what des in their regulations set as the design discharge for a high hazard dam so yes it's uh, applicable to all high hazard dams has it been applied in any other discussions when uh, des is requiring removal or change and has it been challenged it is the regulatory standard for um, high hazard dams. Um, okay. I'm not an engineer. I'm an attorney. So I like to see if someone comes up and says why there's a figure, I have to ask why. And sure. uh, why, why, where did this two and a half times a hundred year flood, did they grab some bureaucrat, grab this out of the sky? Or is it simply a way to get rid of all dams? And that's why I'm wondering if anyone else has challenged it. I was unfortunately ill when the downtown dam was destroyed, and I did not get a chance to participate in that fun and games. Sure. Uh, and a butter here who, you know, probably 10 acres of my, of my swamp land is going to be dried out, and uh, that concerns me a great deal from the impacts that DES is causing. <laughs> so sure. I'm asking some questions. <laughs> I can't speak to um, how DES set those standards, but it's you know it's pretty standard within states for there to be pretty high discharge requirements based on hazard class, and as hazard gets more, it gets higher for the regulatory standard to be higher. And given that this is a high hazard dam, meaning that failure has the potential to risk life, um, it's set at, at a a fairly high frequency event. A very rare frequency event. I mean, it's, it is. It's rare. Two and a half times a hundred year event. It's a, it's a big event for sure. Has that been challenged in New Hampshire to your knowledge? Not to my knowledge. Would you know if it were challenged? I, I don't I don't know. Uh, as I'm not an attorney either. And I haven't been involved in any challenges um, of that discharge. Yet. So... Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, does anybody else have a comment? Wait a second. Two hands raised in the attendees. Yeah, Christopher Clinton has his hand up. And he's muted, there you go. Hi, I'm Christopher Clinton. I'm a Exeter resident and landscape arch architecture student. I was wondering uh, to help get a better idea of how this will affect the surrounding area. Are there any uh, water level maps or um, property maps that we could look at to have a better idea visually um, how it affects everything? Um, I mean, we haven't prepared any inundation maps, but um, the FEMA flood insurance rate maps would be a good option if you're looking at um, at flooded, flooded inundation maps in, in the vicinity. So, uh, and as far as uh, how it might affect uh, water levels of uh, wells and uh, wetlands, um, can you suggest any resources for that? Well, at this point, you know, we're, we're evaluating the two, two of the alternatives that we evaluated kept the crest elevation as it is today. So that would have minimal impact to no impact on overall groundwater levels. Um, and the one of alternative that we evaluated that could potentially impact water levels is the dam removal option. And, you know, our model, we feel comfortable with evaluating, you know, the high level events, but have it, don't feel comfortable 
yet evaluating the low level, more typical um, normal condition events until we uh, get additional bathymetry and additional data collection in the area. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, I'm going to say Bob Stephens. Did I pronounce it right? He has his hand up. Yep. Uh, thank you. Um, <laughs> Sorry, I, I just, got it wrong before. No worries. Um, I just wanted to clarify a question you know, um, related earlier. Um, the is two and a half times the um, hundred year flood for existing dams. Um, so, and I, and I also practice dam engineering. I've never heard of a challenge to the regulation of any kind. Um, and there are and uh, I just wanted to uh, relay that along. If it was a new dam we were talking about, it would be there's a statistical analysis for a probable maximum flood, and it would be a I believe it would be a half PMF uh, or a probable maximum flood for a new dam. If it's an existing dam, it actually gets a a, a grandfather reduced um, um, criteria criterion to meet, and um, that. And that benefits the the owner. Um, so, good clarification. Thank you, Robert. Okay, I currently don't see any hands raised. Oh, here we go. Wait, wait a minute. Don Clement is his hands raised. Thank you. Uh, I'm trying to just try to address uh, Paul Velasquez's question of what our uh, what our feelings are in the presentation. Uh, the uh, alternatives one a and two or one and two, excuse me, uh, what do you say, which is extending the abutments or raising the abutments, has me intrigued. Uh, but at this point, I think we're ver all the numbers you've given are very preliminary, so it doesn't really I. Little, I have some qualms about, you know, an extension of 150 to 175 feet, but would a more detailed study narrow down or, or narrow down that length to an exact number uh, if we did that? That's one question. Uh, but I think it, it might be worth pursuing because if we do that, we do not change any of the upstream uh, river at all. So the upstream river, in terms of its level, uh, its width, its depth, uh, its impact on the well doesn't change. Uh, all we've done really is create a higher dam and extend, and extend and by the extension uh, to to resolve this problem. But I'm wondering, do we need? I would need. I would need to see further numbers and details of what this is going to mean in terms of the length. Is it actually 150, 150 75 feet? Uh, what would the construction, what would the construction cost be? What would the impacts be? Uh, I know we're not at that at that point yet, but if we were to pursue that, uh, I, I personally, I would like to see a little more details, a little more study about either one of those proposals, and and I, you know, I, what the basic difference is between one and two. One was extending the abutments. The second was. Creating a second abutment was that? I yeah, think that essentially was... cre creating a two-tier uh, spillway. Two -tier. So, yeah. it would, um, and yes, additional uh, additional survey, additional evaluation. Yeah. you know, geotech, uh, structural evaluation. There'd be a lot more work that would be required to. Uh, I, and I understand. To answer I those just, questions. Yeah. yeah, and I yeah, and I you know, right now I, I'm curious about that particular uh, those two particular. Uh, Alternatives. I think sure. they were. I think I, I, I. You know, I think they're good alternatives. Good study, but we need to go further. Thank you. I, I see Lionel's hand is up. Uh, yeah. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, we've forgotten one of the things that Paul mentioned. We want to go back to the state and see if it's possible we can lower the. <clears throat> 
severity of the dam or the dam failing. Uh, that is a step we've got to get at, get, get behind us. It's very possible we can go back and work for the state in some way and make it a less, not a high risk dam. And therefore we can, can do another analysis. We've talked about this before. Uh, the high risk part of it is, in my mind, based upon some small problems downstream, not small for some people, but if we could take action to take them out of the way or to reduce the risk, uh, then we've got another analysis that we can follow on. So Paul mentioned that we need to do that too. And I would suggest we need to get that done before we start spending money on considering how to handle taking the dam out or change the dam. Does anybody want to comment on that? I think we had talked about uh, the ability to purchase properties and so forth, and it didn't turn out to be, to work. Paul, do you remember that conversation? Uh, yes, uh, but we're going to clarify uh, with the uh, what, what the uh, with the Dam Bureau. Um, what those requirements would be so we have a full understanding uh, from from the uh, Dam Bureau. Uh, there, even if we were able to reduce the high hazard to substantial hazard, uh, we would still have to do uh, work on the dam as indicated by uh, those hundred year storm events, it, it wouldn't be the design storm of two and a half times a hundred year event. It would be the hundred year storm if we could reduce it, uh, 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 the rating down. Uh, we would still need to do something to the big pocket dam for uh, even that requirement uh, to be met. Uh, so certainly we'll uh, have that discussion uh, with DES, get more clarification of what that exactly means. Um, but by any means, uh, to, to answer uh, uh, or, or to investigate further, as Mr. Clement uh, talked about on options one or two, uh, there's additional work that needs to be done. Well, some of that base work will need to be done even with the uh, uh, the rating decrease down to a substantial hazard. So we could probably, and I'd have to clear this with the uh, town administration and stuff to get the approval for that, but we could be uh, moving forward with uh, additional information gathering such as uh, some of the borings, some of the uh, additional land surveys and that sort of thing. So. Uh, we, we do have uh, uh, some money still left over, but I would still need the uh, head nod from the administration to move forward with some of that uh, anyhow. So there, there's uh, work that uh, is going to be done with the discussions to the state. And uh, it, it seems like the, any of the options that we mentioned here did not fall out yet. Uh, so we, we would start at needing to uh, gather some additional information. Okay, um, we have uh, Bob Stevens wants to make a comment. Thank you. Um, i just curious to know if there's a, an email address that we should send uh, questions to if, as we're thinking about this. And, um, um, you know, suggestions about um, where this might go from here. Um, I'm not I'm not as familiar with the, the dam as um, I'd like to be, I guess. And I, I'd, be, I have a, I'd be very curious to know what the what the foundation materials are like, how deep they are, all of those kinds of questions. Uh, Dan Jones is. Uh, do we have an answer for an email address? Uh, it, it all depends. Uh, uh, if it's uh, the group that wants to talk to this group or to get this group, it, it may be uh, Dick Huber's address. But certainly uh, any type of uh, technical uh, suggestions, it could be uh, uh, to me. 
And um, uh, I can check with Mr. Uh, uh, Galaki uh, on the uh, uh, the attendees, uh, what their addresses are, and I can send out uh, my my email address out to you on that. Okay, if you're trying to reach me, my email address, oh, am I muted? What's going on? Can you hear me? Uh, my email address is huber at acm.org. That could stand for Academy of Country Music, but it does stand for Association of Computing Machinery. In any case, that's a previous life. Huber at acm.org. And I can forward it to the committee or bring it up at the next meeting or whatever is appropriate. Um, I have uh, two questions myself. Can the slides that Jake showed us be put on our website or sent to our recording secretary for assistance at trying to put together the minutes? Yes, definitely. We can, we can send you a copy of the PowerPoint. Okay. Yeah, yeah Jake had uh, suggested that uh, he was going to wait until this uh, presentation happened in case he had to tweak something, but it'll be on the uh, town website when I get it. Okay, that sounds good. And then uh, I know it's way early, but I was going to ask what your feeling is about meeting next month or putting it off an extra month. Do you think we'll have uh, changes to report within 30 days? Uh, I... Uh, and I'm, I'm looking at Jake here, too. I think we can have that discussion with the Dam Bureau uh, in between. And uh, that seems like some uh, 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 very useful information to know about. So, uh, you know, we could report that back whenever you have a meeting. But it seems like we'd have that by next month. Okay. okay. That's good indication that we should meet uh, next month. Okay. Uh, let's see. Dan Jones has his hand up. So I have a question, I think, for Jake. With option three, with the total removal, does that bring into play at all either the Route 111 or the Linden Street bridges? Seems to me at 2.5, we're sending a great deal more water down to them rather than some being held behind this structure. So well, this is it, going to affect those too. It's, um, you know, this is a run of the river type dam, so it's, it's not being operated to modify um, flood peaks and whatnot. So, um, you know, the, the dam itself actually doesn't create a lot of attenuation. Um, so removal of the dam is not expected to change flood conditions downstream. Okay. Just, just asking. Sure. Uh, let's see. I have a comment from Bob Stephens. He wants to comment again. Um, yeah, I, I'm just curious if, if the fish ladder op operates um, and works at this point. Yes, it does operate and is monitored by New Hampshire Fish and Game. So it's passing fish? Um, not as successfully as they would like, but it does pass fish. <laughs> Uh, Warren Biggins would like to speak. Thanks. Um, hey, I, you know, I know it's very early on in this process, but out of sheer curiosity, uh, Jacob and Paul, in, in your experience, what, what's typically cheaper? Is d dam removal the cheaper option or is it uh, reinforcing the dams and bringing them up to meet the requirements? Me to answer, Paul, or do you want to start? <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'll start, but I've only got uh, one dam experience, and and um, we one dam experience uh, in the Great Dam uh, project. It would have been the cheapest to anchor uh, the dam in place. Uh, we would not have had to extend out to the sides uh, very much to do do much other work. This was to drill anchor a cable into the bedrock and then hold down uh, the dam. Uh, that would have been uh, probably 
I don't know, 30%, 40% cheaper than the dam removal. But the dam removal part, part the, why it was so expensive, it wasn't just getting rid of the dam. It was also recontouring the river to allow for the fish passage to, uh, to take place. Uh, we also did some other improvements in the uh, riverbed itself so that there would be uh, no uh, scouring uh, that would uh, affect the Great Bridge or High Street Bridge right, right above the uh, dam. So uh, a considerable amount of uh, funds were spent for recontouring the river to allow for fish passage uh, in the springtime flows. So if you eliminate that part, I think the dam removal would have been uh, the cheapest option then. But that was part and parcel to where we were at with the uh, Great Dam, and it seemed like that was our responsibility at the time. Yeah, and what I, what I would add to that is often, um, you know, the construction costs for dam removal versus modification can sometimes cost very similar, but the long-time operation and maintenance costs usually – um, drive dam removal to be on the, the cheaper side, but not That's always, the ca- not always the case. Sure. Yeah. I understand every project is different, but, uh, that's helpful to know. Thank you. Yeah. And I'd like to add also about the money itself, the, the, the funding to do the construction. Uh, there's not a lot of money, uh, or grants out there to, uh, rehabilitate a dam. But there may be funds, and we took advantage of a good chunk of that uh, with the Great Dam removal uh, for removing the, uh, the dams. Uh, and, and that's why recontouring the river and stuff was so important. If we didn't have that as a component, we probably wouldn't have got those uh, grant funds either. Don Clement wishes to speak. Yeah, I just want to add on, Paul, if I remember correctly, part of the dam removal cost was also some money that had to be spent to reconfigure the uh, uh, HVAC system in the mill. Is that correct? Didn't we have to put some money sure. into the... Uh, <laughs> yes. Huh? I, when I was comparing numbers a little while ago, I left that out. Of it, yeah. Plus, I left where we had to lower uh, the intake for yeah. uh, water supply. Also, I left that out of it. Both of those had to be done, but in the comparison that uh, uh, Mr. Biggins had asked for, I I left that part out. Right. So, so, so these costly items would not be included. Would not have. We would have to. We would not have to do them if the pickpocket dam was removed. I'm not aware of big issues like that that we'd have right. to address yeah so the cost the cost would be smaller than what we that the town had to lay out for the for the uh, great dam yes okay just trying to remember okay um currently we don't have any hands raised want to thank everybody for participating. This has been uh, really good. Oh, Lionel. Lionel wants to say something. Um, (laughs) Unfortunately, I've got another obligation in the building I'm in right now. So I've got to leave. And I appreciate everything we've heard. But I'm going to have to depart and not participate in the rest of the meeting. I apologize. Okay. Uh, Have you read all the minutes and you're ready to approve all of them? Is that what I hear you saying? I've scanned through them, not in detail like you would, but I, okay. I'm happy with what's in them. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, Dick, if I, if I may, could I, uh, for the benefit of the people who are in the attendees, would you mind if I share screens real quick to show where they can maybe see other meetings, previous meetings? Sure. Sure. Okay. Um, so in, in case um, you guys wanted to rewatch, I the question about the fish ladder, I remember that was discussed, I think, at the last meeting or other things. So if you go to the ExeterNH.gov website, um, right on the home page, you can click view meetings here and you'll see all of the meetings for the town and under boards and commissions. If you just filter by the river advisory committee and hit apply, you can see see all the meetings right here. And there's the agenda minutes and, and video links if available. So. 
I just thought I'd share that uh, for people and the attendees if they wanted to catch up on other stuff that had happened previously. Okay, thank you. Um, are we ready to go on to the next agenda items? I, I believe I'm not seeing anybody raising their hand to oppose that. Okay, um, one thing I'd like to mention is emergency funding for the sewer siphons that cross the uh, Squamscott River. And um, there was an email that went out from Melissa Roy saying, uh, we have applied for community funding through Congressman Pappas's office. He will pick 10 projects to bring to Washington to fight for funding. Uh, the next step in the process would be for us to be showing community support through letters and comments. And she's provided a link, uh, which I guess we could get from either Melissa Roy or um, um, Jennifer uh, Perry, uh, where, where we could go and fill out a, um, a form um, to say that Exeter needs support to take care of the emergency. So I believe what's, we, we have this siphon pipe problem across the, the Squamskit that has risen into a recent issue. It's going to cost money. It needs to be done, I believe, to protect the Great Bay from nitrogen, among other things, to, to, to finish off our sewage treatment plant the way it needs to be. And, and it is in many senses, uh, you know, required additional cost that's shown up recently. Uh, and apparently there is federal funding for emergency uh, projects. And, and she's asking if we can uh, come together and, and support uh, consideration of this project uh, in Pappas's uh, uh, program. So I, I'm not sure exactly how to proceed with this. Uh, let me ask Paul, have, have officials related to the, this project uh, weighed in? Uh, can you repeat that, uh, Dick? Uh, I didn't quite follow it. Okay, well, there's been a, an email that's been circulating. And it yeah, I got that part, the, just the last part. Well, the, the question is whether anybody has has come forward from the town, from the officials like engineering, to to support uh, this being considered as an emergency funding through Pappas's office. Uh, yeah, yes, uh, through uh, Melissa Roy, and uh, I helped her uh, write some information to apply for that uh, at the very beginning. Uh, I, don't, I don't know what pro, where they're at in the process of selecting it, uh, but it would certainly help that if uh, citizens thought this was a good project uh, to voice their uh, support uh, for that program. Uh, we still haven't heard whether uh, uh, we're going to get that money or not. That's a decision they still have to make. But the supporting data to get this far uh, has been supplied to Pappas's office through uh, Melissa Roy with the help of the Public Works Department. Well, is there still time for more people to come forward and uh, support this uh, drive? As far as my understanding, yes. Okay, so uh, the question is, uh, should members of the River Committee be finding this link and going there and registering their support? Um, the link, you should be able to get the link from Jennifer Perry or uh, Melissa Roy. They, they've been sending it out to uh, some people. Any, anybody have any comments about this? Oh, Nico, do you have your hand up? Thank you, Mr. Chair. If I, if I could just, uh, I could explain this a little bit uh, in more detail. Okay. Uh, under the American Relief Plan, um, my understanding is, is that... Um, um, members of Congress can take a bucket of money back to uh, back to uh, their states and and try to identify projects. So in Congressman Pappas's case, uh, he's looking across the state for ten up to ten shovel ready projects, uh, and that those are those are ten projects throughout the entire state. Um, 
Uh, the interim town manager at the time, Melissa Roy, and I uh, participated in, in several conference calls uh, with Pappas's office, um, as did other municipalities. And what they suggested was that each municipality put together a group of projects from the very large to, to some that are very small and, and have a wide breadth of, of, uh, of projects. Again, being shovel ready. Some could be infrastructure, some could be public safety. So along those lines, obviously, you know, we immediately identified the siphon project as being one of the large projects. There are some other projects that we identified as well. Uh, Melissa, uh, along with um, other municipalities in, in New Hampshire, had an opportunity to present to Pappas's office orally on a Zoom meeting um, the projects. And I think that's what Paul alluded to. He helped Melissa write this. Um, I had the opportunity of reviewing it before she did so. Now, my understanding is, is that this, this money, if, if this project or if a project was approved by Pappas's office as one of those 10, uh, we're not certain when those funds would be available. And there's question as to whether or not they'd even be available in 2021. My understanding is, is that it, they may be available in 2022. But obviously, you know, uh, the town is going to try to get, you know, any funding that we can get. Apart from that, though, we believe that through the American Relief Plan, the town may be able to apply for some funding uh, from the monies that are going to be expended from the state. In other words, um, through the American Relief Plan, each state is awarded a bucket of money, and then, and then the, the state will then allocate that bucket of money to the uh, respective municipalities. Um, within that money, I think that there will be an opportunity to identify some funds that can go uh, to infrastructure. Those funds would be more readily available in 2021. My understanding is, is that once the state receives the funds from the feds, they have 60 days to turn it over to the municipalities, but you only get half of it up front, and then you get the other half um, in 2022. Nonetheless, um, you know, it would be some funding that would be available. So um, that that's a best case scenario through the American Relief Plan. Of course, nothing is certain there, but we have applied for anything and everything that we can get to put towards this project. Um, apart from that, uh, I met with the town manager and the chair of the water and sewer department earlier this week. And in the worst case scenario, we don't get any funding through the American Relief Plan. We're identifying ways that we can move forward um, with the existing reserves that we have. So. Um, a lot of pieces in play. I hope that clarified it a little bit. But back to your question, Mr. Chair, is that uh, certainly uh, the uh, select board and the town manager have signed a letter to Representative Pappas. Any, uh, any additional um, correspondence from the committee and from citizens, I think, would only help uh, in our quest to, uh, to seek additional funding. Okay, well, again, uh, you can request the link from either Jennifer Perry or um, Melissa Roy um, and pursue this. I, I think we, we should give it our best thought. Okay, the next thing I wanted to mention is um, there is a climate summit, the 2021 climate summit from the Coastal Adaptation Workgroup, CAW. Uh, scheduled for May 26th and 27th. So you may want to participate in that. Um, any thoughts about that? Okay, there's one other thing. We have an ALY festival that's planned for 2022. And uh, Kristen Murphy sent out an email. Um, she would like, well, let's see. At your next committee meeting, could you please bring this idea up, engage your committee's interest and capacity to take this on, and if there is support, uh, to designate a representative. So what she's talking about is Alewife Festival, a multi-board uh, temporary committee focused on bringing this festival back next year. Um, let's see. Uh, there are so many fun activities that we could include from the past, more recent past, and new ones, kayak tours, uh, a 5K run, a raffle to guess the first day of the actual arrival of the alewives, a town-wide cleanup, environmental movies, presenters on water-friendly lawn and garden care, rain barrel sale, tree walk, family hike, you name it. A lot of these activities are all happening anyway, but tying it to a specific event or celebration, 
I think would really resonate. So this is coming from Kristen Murphy, and they haven't picked a date yet in 2022, but they would like to have people jo join their, their efforts to um, combine their efforts to, to help make this happen. Um, if, if, is there a volunteer to be a representative to this group? Uh, I, I guess I can ask that and see where we are. I didn't see any hands raised. Okay, well, in any case, that's that's out there happening, Alewife Festival 2022, and it's just in the formative stages. Okay, I guess the next thing on the agenda is to deal with the draft minutes. And as Lionel said, I, in a previous life, I was a software engineer and I had to participate in code reviews. So I do uh, notice if there's something in the minutes that uh, that you know, maybe a nitpick, but it's going to be the, in the official minutes, so I can mention it. Uh, did you all read the minutes for the September 17th meeting? And these are way overdue because we, we lost our uh, recording secretary for some reason that I don't understand, and these minutes never got produced until recently when our new um, uh, recording secretary, Joanna Bartell, came forward and produced these from the videotape. So you all poured over the September 17th minutes. Did anybody find anything that they want to mention? Okay, no hands are raising. All right, well, let me mention a couple things. On the top of page two, it says there's a capital improvement project for $3 million that will be reviewed by the BRC this year. And I think as a general rule, if you're going to use an acronym, you need to expand it the first time you use it. And that's the Budget uh, Recommendation Committee. I believe that stands for BRC. Um, that's correct. Yeah. Okay. And then on the last page, it says Mr. Huber asked people if people could come before the RAB to address the correct approach to septic issues, that should be uh, RAC for the River Advisory Committee. So RAB is wrong. And that's page three. And uh, also she says the members discussed an issue with the River Advisory Committee page of the town website and um, uh, Nico offered to reach out to it. And I have no memory of that. Does anybody remember what that was all about? Something wrong with the website related to the River Committee? Anyway, it's in the minutes, so it must have been mentioned at the meeting. Mr. Chair, I vaguely recollect um, Yeah, I vaguely recollect that, that I was, I was going to reach out to Bob Glowacki um, Or not, Bob. I, I, I mean, I, I do remember that, um, and okay. believe we did, but that was uh, too long ago for my recollection to be anything but vague. Okay, well, mine too. So it's in the minutes. I don't want to take it out of the minutes, but I'm not exactly sure what the issue was back then. Okay, having said that, is there uh, anyone who would uh, move to accept the approve the minutes? I move to approve it. That was Rod. Anybody second? Dan Jones will second. And we can vote. All in favor of, of approving these minutes, say aye. 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 All opposed? And anybody abstaining? Okay, we all approve the minutes. All right, the next minutes are November, November 19th. And uh, once again, there's a mention of the BRC, and that's the uh, budget uh, uh, budget committee. Some the budget budget recommendations committee. Yeah, budget recommendations committee. On page two, it's the acronym is mentioned, but not expand, expanded. And I, some of our audience would be uh, is difficult having a difficult time, like I do, trying to sort out these uh, these acronyms. Uh, anybody else have any other comments on uh, the November 19th draft minutes? 
Seeing none, again, we can uh, vote to approve these minutes. Somebody want to move that? I'll move to approve the minutes. Denny's are voting to move, voting to approve. I'll second it. Rod is seconding it. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? All abstaining? Okay, it's unanimously approved the minutes of November 19th. And now we have draft minutes for um, March 18th. And you've all poured over these to find all the problems. Um, anybody, well, okay. um, on, uh, on the bottom of page two, there's a sentence that says they are focusing on how to limit the scope of what we were trying to do to, and to establish a baseline of what had we had to do. I think the first had should be removed and then it would say, it'll say of what we had to do. We've got two hads there. All right. And then, as I say, I used to be a software engineer doing code inspections and a semicolon would mess you up. So there's two paragraphs in this one on page two and one on page three that don't have a period at the end when the paragraph completes. Mr. Chairman. So my, that's my nitpick of the day. It certainly is. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Other than that, I didn't find anything else that I need thought needed to change. Um, so again, does somebody want to move to approve the minutes? I move to approve the minutes with corrections. Okay, and uh, I will second. Dick Huber seconding. And we can go for a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? All abstaining? Again, we have caught up with our minutes. What a deal. And thank you, Joanna Bartell, for helping us get those accomplished. She's going to do minutes of this presentation from the, the video. And I can imagine that's complicated because of the graphic presentation that was part of it. We'll, we'll see how that goes. All right, does anybody have any other business? Seeing none, how about public comment? All right, I believe that, uh, that we were planning to have the next meeting on the third Thursday of May, given what Paul said. So that would be May 20th. Does that work for everybody? Three o'clock Zoom meeting, May 20th? Uh, Dick, I just had a quick, quick uh, comment, if I may. Sure. I know you mentioned that article, uh, that the poem that was uh, referencing the Squamscott River got a lot of notification or notoriety in that big publication. I just wanted to update you that the documentary that we made uh, and released in 2019 about the river uh, has been viewed more than 25,000 times online. Really? So um, a lot of uh, people have done have been viewing this project, and I got a call from someone out in. Uh, Michigan or something wanting to show that film uh, to committees like yourself out there who are facing these issues. So uh, the story is being spread out there. So just thought you guys would like that update. Yes, I hope that makes it into the minutes. That's good. Thank you very much. Okay, well, I guess at this point we can take a motion to adjourn. I move. Okay, Dan Jones is moving to adjourn. I can second that. And uh, I guess we're good until May 20th. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.